Service members of Reddit, what is your worst military wife story? Story 1. Posting on behalf of my husband. Worst? They came back from a 15-month tour in Iraq. His platoon sergeant went home to find another man living in his house with his wife and kids. His kids, toddlers, were calling the guy daddy. When he walked in, his wife basically said, yay, I want a divorce. I'm with him now. Worst part was the platoon sergeant and new daddy kind of worked together, but was one of the few who stayed behind for clerical stuff while the rest deployed. Yes, I know this is absolutely against the rules. This was when stuff was the Wild West and a DUI was an unofficial requirement for E6, ETA. I asked my husband what happened after this. He doesn't know what happened to Jody, a.k.a. Deployment Replacement Daddy. The husband threatened to take the kids and kick her onto the street, which he definitely had grounds to do. Instead, she agreed to on-demand love and threesomes, including summoning a prostitute if he wanted one and helping him keep it on the DL. Story 2. A guy in my shop, Air Force, deployed to Iraq for 4.5 months. Before he left, he signed over general power of attorney to his wife. While he was gone, she started baiting another guy in our shop then signed the divorce paperwork as his power of attorney and his rights to see his kids, as well as draining his bank account. She went to live with the other guy in my shop and his friend off base. They were both arrested for check fraud when trying to pass off a check that was the roommates in the shopette on base. The guy she divorced eventually got full custody of the kids and the other guy in my shop got kicked out of the AF. There were other stories of cheating and all of that kind of stuff, but this one takes the cake. She actively worked to ruin his life when all he did was love his kids and get deployed to Iraq. Don't give anyone general power of attorney ever. I don't care how much you trust them or how much you think they love you. Don't do it. You can give them specialized power of attorney that only allows them to handle your affairs that you very specifically need them to handle. Story 3. Our neighbors, too, brought us some stories. 1. Unit deployed and she met a new guy. Used power of attorney to divorce the husband overseas and married the new guy so quick she was able to stay on base in the same house. First husband came home and ended up being in the same platoon as second husband, who now lived in his house with his kids and all his belongings. 2. When we first moved in on base, we had a neighbor that was super friendly. Wife told us she had cancer, so her brother was staying with her to take care of her. We think nothing of it. A few months later, they moved out to live off base. Normal thing, so no reason to be skeptical. Fast forward a few months, and I'm shoveling the driveway, and a guy from next door comes over to say hi. I say hi and welcome him as a new neighbor. He's not a new neighbor. He's had that house for a couple years. I got confused and asked about the woman who had moved out recently. He told me that woman was his wife. The brother was her lover. She didn't have cancer, and she spent all his money on Farmville, then moved out with everything they owned. Story 4. I have two! First, I was the witness to one of my soldiers' wedding. It was a typical Joe wedding in that it took place midday at a Wings and Things during the Lucky Bride's lunch break. The mother of the bride owned said Wings and Things, but refused to attend the ceremony despite being at work that day. It was pretty amazing. Second, I was at officer candidate school with an army hot blonde. She was a deployment nine tenths and everybody hit on her. She was drowning in attention, but it was all for naught because she was married to a green beret or something. Well, all that attention finally got to her and she started sleeping with the cadets. It got to the point of her and another married female getting nailed in a hotel room at the same time and they reportedly high-fived mid-coitus. About three-quarters of the way through the course, she started to put on a little weight, and it sure seemed like her belly was growing faster than the rest of her. About four weeks before graduation, it came out that she was, in fact, pregnant with who the bad nose baby. Not long after graduation, I heard that her marriage to Mr. SF did not survive the encounter. Story 5. Dude in my platoon's wife falsely accused her ex-MP boyfriend of RPE, went as far as stabbing a mattress and swallowing condom to set him up. Dude spends weeks in jail before being cleared of all charges. When it comes to light, it was crazy lady vindictive nonsense. She amped up the crazy. She handed her friend her and my platoon mate's baby through a window at night while they watched a movie. Platoon mate went to check on the baby and it was missing. Prompted the first Amber Alert in Alaska history. She tried to pin it on the MP as some sort of act of vengeance. I can only imagine what the poor dude was thinking when the cops came to him with this. He was very quickly eliminated a subject and they figured out that the baby was safe rather quickly. Story 6. My brother-in-law was on both sides of crappy cheating stories. He married a woman he chatted to online for a few weeks when he was 19. Then he had to go to Iraq. A month after he left, she told him that he got her pregnant. He comes home after six months, then she has the baby. The baby definitely is not his. Fast forward 10 years. He's married to an awesome chick we all like. She works a job and takes care of everything around the house. He cheats on her with an 18-year-old girl that worked at Sonic. She catches him and leaves for a weekend to go stay with her sister to figure out what to do. 
He puts all her stuff in cardboard boxes out under the carport and moves in the new girl. Story 7. Long story, TL. Dodder got tricked, married an already married woman, lost everything. So I was assigned to Pensacola NAS for some training. I wasn't going to be there long and shouldn't have dated. 21-year-old me was stupid. I met a girl off base and we started to date. She loved that I was in the military while constantly saying she didn't like military guys. Should have been a red flag. She literally pretended to be the perfect girlfriend. Whatever hobby I mentioned, she said, OMG, I'm into that too. She did everything possible to act like we were a perfect match. She even said she worked as a FEMA office manager when I told her I joined because I like to help people. Four months goes by and I get orders to Canon AFB in New Mexico. I mentioned that I have to go soon. She knew I was just there temporarily. And she starts hinting at wanting to go with me, thinking I'm in a really good relationship, I agree. We get to New Mexico and I rent us a place. I was actually supposed to live on base in dorms for about a year until I ranked up to senior airman. Things between us go downhill immediately after moving into our place. She suddenly didn't enjoy doing anything I did and had a really bad attitude. She said it was just nerves for moving so far. Fast forward two months and I'm getting out by my captain for living off base without authorization. I explained my situation and he said to send her back or get married. Yup, you guessed it. Got married. We were married for nine years. She was a miserable crud the whole time. Refused to get a job, so I had to 100% support her. Turns out she really couldn't get a job because she just had a GED and her only work experience as as a receptionist for maintenance at a trailer park. She lied about the FEMA job. Right before our nine-year mark, she begs me to get out of the military so we can move back to Florida. Her grandmother passed away and she said we had to take care of her grandfather. Stupidly, I did it. We get to Florida and her grandfather is fine. We only saw him a handful of times over the course of two years. Eventually, I catch on that she's been cheating on me, and I throw her crud out of my house, and she moves in with her boyfriend. Apparently, she wanted to go back to Florida because there were some guys there she wanted to hook up with. When I met her, she was 140 and blew up to 350 within two years of us being together. So I really had no interest in her SS Shuli. Plus, she was a brat. Initated divorce, and she wouldn't cooperate. She kept breaking into my house with her boyfriend and looting my place. I'd bring home groceries and they'd be gone the next time I left the house. Cops wouldn't do anything because we were married and same with landlord. I decided to move and she caught wind. I'm at school and she clears my house out. I go to her place to confront her and she calls the cops. I get accused of burglary and battery and the police believe her because the sociopath can cry on command. I end up getting a plea deal to withhold adjudication of a felony and three years of probation. My lawyer convinced me to take it. During the process, I find out she was never legally married to me. She was, and still is, married to a career criminal up in Michigan. She had me take care of her for nearly a decade, while miserable the whole time. And she heavily utilized her medical benefits from being a military dependent. She was never actually my legal wife. My PO felt bad and I was able to get off my probation at a year and five months. Charges were lessened so they could be sealed and eventually expunged. She literally has suffered zero consequences for what is basically bigamy with fraud, a class felony. Florida won't help because they said New Mexico has jurisdiction. New Mexico won't do anything because she is out of state. Story 8. Air Force and Navy veteran here, and I'm a Marine wife. The worst thing I ever experienced was the death of a beautiful five-month-old baby girl. The skirt and his wife were serious gamers. The wife also suffered from mental health issues. Both were weird and ignorant. The wife was tired of the baby crying and not sleeping. So she propped a bottle on a pillow used more pillows to cushion her, and left her in the master bedroom while she and the hubby game. The little girl suffocated. Neither parent checked on her for 12 plus hours. They said they thought she was sleeping. They found her dead, left her for several more hours, and made a failed attempt to resuscitate her while they were on the phone with 911. They're so stupid. The police and EMS shared with me that rigor mortis had already set in, and it looked as the baby had been dead for more than 24 HRS. The parents went back to gaming because that wanted to finish their match or whatever. The mother showed zero remorse. However, she was completely fascinated with how popular she was becoming on social media. So much so that she was super giddy with her local fame and said her kid dying was worth the fame and GoFundMe. The Marine was indifferent to the whole thing. This was one of my husband's Marines. We got the call to go to the family and bring them whatever they needed for temporary lodging. We had no idea what a stuffed show we'd be walking into. Story 9. Obligatory, not me, but my friend who I'll call Robert. Robert was bummy, slobby-looking guy who was always on the receiving end of jokes and pretty much only survived because he was a nice guy, so as lazy as he was, most airmen would cover for him. Being a genuinely nice guy goes a long ways in the military. So Robert had an unusually hot wife, like completely surprised everyone that ever saw them together, and we all assumed that he was packing some real heat 
or that she wasn't a shallow jerk like the rest of us. So I'm not sure how this was arranged, but Robert had a best friend who I'll call Greg, and one day after a few beers, Robert decides it would be real cool if Greg messed his wife and let him watch. Greg is objectively a better-looking guy, BTW, and it happens. Greg asks the wife, while Robert watches, and this happens a few more times until one of the times, the wife finishes up with Greg and tell her husband Robert that she no longer wants to bat him, that she only wants to bat Greg. This made him very upset, and why do I know all of this? Because Robert came into our squadron and had a mental breakdown and told all of us? I was there trying to get some leave paperwork signed. He straight up told this entire story to all of our leadership and finished it off with a demand that Greg be punished. Greg obviously wasn't punished but was asked to stop, which I'm sure he didn't. In fact, no one was punished and in classic military fashion. This story spread faster than his wife's legs for Greg. Gossip runs hard in the military. Story 10. I'll tell my brother's story. Air Force. He went to work one day, had a normal day, then came home. When he arrives home, his wife's car is gone. He thinks nothing of it. He goes into the house, and it's a baiting disaster. Clothes strewn everywhere, appliances in weird piles all around the house, and a bunch of stuff is missing. Washer, dryer, fridge, light bulbs, their bed, couch, etc., etc. Most terrifying of all, though, is that their son is also missing, along with a bunch of his stuff. His son was around five or six at the time. He starts to bat out because there's no note about it anywhere. He tries to call his wife, but her phone is off. He tries to get a hold of his wife's family, but nobody answers. He calls mutual friends. Nobody has any idea. He then calls the police and reports that they've been kidnapped and states that her car is missing, and thus it must have been stolen during the kidnapping. Remember this part. It comes up again in the future. The police come out and take a statement, and then she finally calls him while the police are there. She tells him that she's staying with her family and that they are getting a divorce. She also has a restraining order on him, as she has told a judge that he is abusive and violent. He is not, and she later admitted she felt bad about lying but she wanted custody, and her lawyer advised her to say that. The brat knew when he would come home and waited 45 minutes until after the fact to call him and let him know his life has been messed. Their son is fine. He relaxes as much as he can, but she has really messed him here. The restraining order gets him in trouble with his boss, and he's messed up for a while by how bad he was blindsided. And keep in mind, this baiting brother of mine served three tours in the Middle East in Iraq, Afghanistan. This shook him up more than an IED did, so everything is okay at least. A few days go by, and they start working with lawyers to solve everything. Well, guess what? Remember when he reported that her vehicle was missing, stolen? She used that in their custody battle as evidence that he was malicious and vindictive because he did it to cause her trouble with the law and to scare her. And the judge ends up siding with her and punishing my brother for filing a bogus police report when he thought they had been kidnapped. No baiting joke! My brother's lawyer was a buffoon, and she came from a family with money who got her good lawyers. She took him to the cleaners and got everything she wanted, even the very house she abandoned when she left him. She didn't move into the house, though. She just evicted my brother and then sold it months later for much less than it was worth. It took him years to recover mentally and financially. He's out of the military now, 20 years in, retired, and getting his civilian life on track. He has a great relationship with his son, and his ex-wife continues to be a constant source of pain and misery. My brother handles it like a champ, though, because, as he puts it, no matter how horrible and demanding she is, he has faced far worse just working in the military. My brother is an absolute baiting legend. His life has been full of ups and downs, more downs than ups, but he still keeps going. I respect him more than anyone else out there, and without a doubt, he is my hero. Love that dude. Story 11. I was pretty naive and got maneuvered into a couple of stuff situations. First, somehow ended up alone with colleague's wife. She starts telling CXY stories and getting closer and closer to me. Tells me something like, Nobody gives better blowjobs than me. It made sense in conversation, but also wasn't really necessary. My somewhat intoxicated response. Okay, then, good night. I'll be leaving now. Second, was drinking with a different colleague. He got very intoxicated, and out of the blue, starting berating me for trying to sleep with his wife, I did not want to sleep with his wife and was not trying to. Noped out of there, too. Later that night, wife showed up at my apartment, ostensibly to apologize. Heard some other rumors, but was never sure what to believe. Story 12. A buddy of mine I met in ET school had met a younger Mexican girl, fell in love, and wanted to provide a better life for her than he was able to at the time. He had been in the Coast Guard and rejoined. He had the first pick of where he was going to be stationed next because he'd already had prior service and had been on a ship for years. The school was about five months long. While he was there, his wife decided to join too without telling him. They were from South Texas, and he had the choice to be stationed in Galveston, not far from both of their families. 
But she ends up getting stationed in Oregon on land. The closest place they could get him to where she was stationed was Seattle, also on land. But he obviously wanted to be close to her, so that's where he opted to choose. However, within a couple of weeks of graduation, she also gets transferred to Seattle, so it looks like things might be okay after all. Until the day of graduation, when they tell him they have changed his orders, and he will be stationed on a polar icebreaker, which would be leaving the week he gets to his new unit. The ship was set to literally make a trip around the world, and he'd be gone for seven months or so. He finds out while off the southern coast of South America that she had been kicked out of the Coast Guard for Medicaid's and A for cheating with a guy she was stationed with, another long story, and was now working as a stripper in Seattle. Were there red flags before they got married? I'm not sure, but it didn't seem that way before she joined the CG. He was a nice and really good dude. Weird turn of events in such a short time. Edit. For those who may not know, when being temporarily stationed somewhere for training like this, at least in the CG, they do not pay for your spouse to join you, nor do they provide any form of lodging. She was living in Texas when she joined the service while he was stationed in California. Story 13. I was in the officer club in Okinawa around 2012 or so, in walk at least six women in slutty, cut-off shorts versions of flight suits that were bright orange. I was pretty confused until my marine friend told me that meant their husbands were deployed and they were looking for a good time. Apparently, it was an open secret. While I was in the Air Force, way back in 2003 or so, a guy's wife started hanging out in the dorms without her husband. Me and my buddy avoided her because we figured it wasn't going to turn out okay. Yeah, turns out she was just running through every guy in the dorms and even had love with a guy in our shop. I mean that literally. He brought her into the shop and they had love on one of our workbenches. Again, back in the early 2000s. Guy I know had his wife attack him with an iron skillet. Both of them were active duty. He ended up choking her out because she was trying to defeat him. Cops get called because it's base housing and walls are paper thin. Wife admits she attacked him and he was just defending himself. First sergeant presses charges on the husband. Husband gets found guilty and kicked out of the AF and becomes a house husband for his wife who is still in the military. Wife never got charged with anything. Story 14. I got two. We had a particularly worthless piece of stuff in my unit. Let's call him Warren for sake of the story. Warren was the single stupidest SOB I have ever met in my entire life, bar none. Absolute stuff, Marine, who could legitimately barely tie his shoes. The fact that this dude had passed through the recruiters, boot camp, and SOI was a pox on the name of the Marine Corps, in my opinion. This dude got married before we left for our first tour. It took her about three days to send him pictures of her getting a train run on her by six black dudes. Him and his wife were both pasty lily white, not trying to make it racist, just setting the scene. She proceeded to get knocked up during one of these trysts, which she was holding at their base housing regularly. She found out which one of the dudes was the father and had him move into their house. When we returned from deployment, he proceeded to forgive her and continued to let her baby daddy live in the house with them. That went on for a couple months till the dude beat him up and they called PMO to get him out of there. Fast forward a few years, I am awaiting separation because I reached the end of my contract. So is Warren because we went to boot camp together. He made it all the way somehow. We were living in a barracks designated for soon to be separating Marines. He would hang out and bum beers of people to get drunk, while she would make her way from room to room looking for dork with a decent success rate. That was the state of things when I packed up my stuff and left. She offered my a goodbye BJ, which I politely declined. The other dude was also a piece of stuff. We will call him Niles. He was one of our junior Marines and was worthless from day one. Due to pack a day and never passed an annual fitness test as far as I know, physically and mentally weak, lived in off-base housing with his wife. The story we got was that his lady was literally puking in the toilet drunk when he proposed to her in between volleys and she said yes and went through with it. This dude would have some of the platoon over to his apartment on the weekends to do some drinking and hanging out. I never went, mostly because I was very hard on him during the workday being as how I was this chuckle S team leader. The story I heard from multiple sources was that every party went pretty much the same way. They would all start drinking, Niles would get wasted way early because he was a lightweight, pass out, and then his wife would pick one. Three other guys there and let them have their way with her in the other room while he drunkenly slept the night away. You get only the classiest of people in the Marine infantry. Story 15. While I was in the Navy, my husband was a civilian. We married young like all service members do at 19. We grew up in the same city and dated for several years. I thought I knew the guy inside and out. He had some anger issues, but nothing out of the ordinary for a 19-wire old dude. I deployed to Afghanistan almost immediately, and that's when things changed. Some other base wife told him that I was, which I was not. He started doing heroin at some point, started selling medicates to base wives, absolutely trashed my house. He sold everything and drained my account, thousands of dollars in deployment money gone. He left base never to return. My two dogs were left in the house, did more and more damage, 
and were taken to the Humane Society where I paid hundreds to get them back. He hung out with a Japanese girl off base until my return. They got pregnant, then he started to follow me and threaten me. Anyways, we got divorced and his psycho mother continued to threaten me for several years. Overall, very fun experience would rate four tenths. Story 16. I was in with a guy that proposed to a girl back home that he barely knew. He bought her a car that she complained about but still accepted. He doesn't even have a car and asks for rides everywhere. He got her an apartment back in their hometown and pays her rent. He sends her his entire paycheck to her to help her take care of her son and get anything else she needs. He would tell me fishy things about her that made it obvious she was cheating. Out of nowhere, she gets pregnant and stops talking to him to him completely. I tell him to get a DNA and he refused. Of course, a couple months later, the baby is born and looks nothing like him. He gets the test and it's not his daughter. He later found out the baby was by the first kid's basketball coach. The coach tells my friend, he's a good father and I'm going to fall back and let you raise her. My friend is still with her to this day and she refuses to marry him.